I think I want Bran to introduce the idea because this all came off um, the back of us being in Wales and Bran finding something in a shop there. So Bran, do you want to give us your recollection? So during meetup in September, September, yeah, September, we were in Wales and we stumbled across, we were in like a mall, right? And we found this like odds in, was it not really odd? What was it? Call it. It was an arcade. It was an arcade. It's a shopping center. It's not an arcade. Arcade, shopping center, whatever. You guys have weird words for shit. <laughs> <laughs> we stumbled across a small, like, odds and ends, like, old shit store. And we found two books of the topper, which I did buy and currently have in my hands. One for 1982 and one for 1989. And apparently the rabbit hole for who, like, for, like, the change in hands and all of these comics is changed a lot and so specs has created a diagram going through all of that that he's put in way too much effort into as he always does oh jesus i'm looking at it it's like a conspiracy wall there's some very um it has its own unhinged comic names yeah do you want to give us a highlight do you want to sure yeah let me i'm 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 thumbing through it right now the there's tricky dicky the greatest <laughs> gangster of them all yeah he was their mascot for a time i believe nick kelly special agent and cedric his assistant in the m- case of the mysterious mole that one's not that funny wasn't there one called timmy the tranny or something like that there's is D- Danny's Tranny, which is about Danny's a transistor tranny. radio. Oh, yeah. That is what people used to call transistor radios in this country. So Daniel's transistor radio is a story about <laughs> a, a boy who has a transistor radio that can do things like make his arm longer if he points <laughs> it at things. So at one point in the comic, he says, I'll use my tranny powers to make my arm grow longer. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> it was a different time. It's like reading comics written by an alien. I got a s- super boy, but it's like soup, like the 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 liquid. Yeah. This chum soup is really strange. One sip can cause a powerful change. <laughs> it's basically just like Popeye, but instead of spinach, it's soup. <laughs> My experience with uh, British comics is my dad had a lot of uh, a comic called The Whoopee, uh, <laughs> which doesn't feature in DC Thompson, uh, but it featured such cool characters as the Evil Eye, which was a, a disembodied floating eyeball that would zap people and make them evil, but it would never make them do evil things the Evil Eye would want. There was also Butkins Billionaires, who were like this classic... Uh, lower class family but they were just billionaires and they would always be like scammed by people uh but they would always come out on top uh they would always try to give away their money but whatever that they did to try and get rid of their money would just make them richer and the my favorite was uh, a comic strip called sweeney toddler which is about (laughs) a uh baby that is uh, a sociopath that that tries to uh, kill and injure people, but it, again, it never works out in Sweeney Toddler's favour. What I like about all these fucking British comics is that you just start with a title pun yeah. and work <laughs> yeah. outwards from that. Yeah. Who could forget Pete Butt Pike and his brilliant bike? <laughs> You see, it was aspirational. Not every kid could get a bike back in the day. First comic has like the has like a motorcycle with like, a little face on it with a speech wall saying, "Yeah, I'm magic." So the reason I think this really fell into our radar was we were looking at this and I was like, I've never heard of the topper before. But I was reading through Brian's toppers and I was like, I have recognised some of these characters from other British comic books I've read, like The Dandy. And we did a quick search and we found out that the topper eventually became the Beezer and the topper because it combined with a comic called the Beezer and eventually got rolled into the Dandy. And we were like, okay, what else? So we looked at the Beezer and it turned out that it absorbed other comics as well. And 
through about i would say nine or ten hours of research over the last couple of days <laughs> i have put together a comprehensive web of how these comics are connected um there's a link in the discord um chat that you guys all might want to look at someone else had already made a similar timeline it's not got quite as much stuff on it as mine but it was a good source of information um the the really interesting thing is that at at all times, DC Thompson, who um, are the producers of these comics, had multiple conflicting comic series, not conflicting, but competing, competing comic series aimed at the same type of audience um, that were doing essentially the same thing with the same writers and artists for the most part, making similar comics for young boys and girls and they all got rolled into one comic eventually because it was stupid that they had five things that all did the same thing. <laughs> this, this all begins in about 1921, so we're between the two world wars Wars, and they have what's called the Big Five. Uh, the Big Five are Adventure, Rover, Wizard, Skipper, and Hotspur, um, which were not necessarily comic books. They're not necessarily comic books. A lot of these were just like written texts, like short stories for young boys to read. And I think because we were like in the midst of two wars, there was a lot of like, you know, stories about soldiers and stories about combat and things like that. So the other major thing that DC Thompson does the one of the biggest things that DC Thompson um, publishes is the Sunday Post. They also do another uh, Dundee-based newspaper. So some of the things we're going to talk about have existed in the Sunday Post as um, comic strips. In that, you know how newspapers will generally like have Garfield or that hot Limmy, goth my niece. chick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, stuff like that. So uh, in the Sunday Post, you have. Oh, Wooly, um, which is how you would pronounce our Willy, I think, um, if you were Scottish. So it's written in Scots. You have the Bruins, who are the, the Browns. Um, but you have a number of things like Wishbone Wuzzy, which was also in The Skipper, um, which was uh, one, of these, um, one of these written sort of adventure stories things was The Skipper. The Skipper also had a side comic called the Midget Comic, um, so-called because it was a small comic book not because of any uh people that featured in it um and this this was also a supplement to i believe the wizard for some time um it it came with the rover it came with the wizard it came with the skipper and some of the comic strips from those appeared as well in the sunday post and are potentially still going on so um you can see how dc thompson already was crossing over their properties with things from skipper getting into their newspaper comic strips um, we talked about the big five, so we've got uh, Adventure, um, we've got the Rover, we've got the Wizard, for instance, um, and Adventure was absorbed into the Rover eventually. <laughs> Um, the the rover was absorbed into the wizard at some point, and these were all mostly text based stories with some um, some cartoon strips. Um, as things moved more towards cartoon, the wizard got rolled into the victor. Oh my god! There's so many of them. And hence, this is all. <laughs> The Hotspur, which came from the Hornet originally and was absorbed by that. The Hotspur rolled into the Victor as well. Buddy, which was very short-lived, rolled into the Victor. Bullet was mainly comics, got rolled into Warlord, and Warlord got rolled into the Victor. So did Scoop. Down here on the right, we've got <laughs> Champ. Champ came from Spike, and they all got rolled into the Victor as well. Okay, so the Victor actually didn't get rolled into anything, really, once it finished in 1992 but we're talking about the Victor being there from 1961 to 1992 and absorbing comics and um, magazines that had been going since 1921. Uh, I've chosen it that, like, the key essentially is a big arrow uh, means that a comic got absorbed by another comic. Uh, a dotted line arrow means that, say, I flew with Braddock here, for instance, this was originally in, I mean, it was in Red Dagger as well. That's what a double dotted line shows. But a single dotted line shows that originally <laughs> that came from the rover. So the rover had stories of I flew with Braddock. The wizard probably did as well. And adventure probably did too at some point. Um, it was reprinted in Red 
dagger, which is why there's so many different lines coming off red dagger because it just reprinted from the big five. Um, but I flew with Braddock was eventually absorbed into the victor when the move happened because not all of the stories that were running in, say, uh, Warlord, for instance, got transferred across to the victor when Warlord became victor. They just kept the best stuff. Um, things that people will probably know about DC Thompson that they will have actually heard of are the Beano and the Dandy. So the Beano has been running since 1938 uh, and is still running. The Dandy has been running since 1937. It finished in 2013. It had a brief spell online in 2013 before folding and it still gets a yearly annual. Wasn't it partly absorbed into the Beano? So not really. Characters from the Beano uh, and the Dandy haven't really crossed over very much. I couldn't find any um, solid evidence. There is one instance, I'm going to zoom in on it uh, in a second, of Desperate Dan and Dennis the Menace crossing over. The, uh, the all-time greatest crossover. Suck on that, Marvel. Dan the Menace and Desperate Dennis. Um, and, <laughs> and that's like the only time the two of them ever met. Um, but there's, there's very various da uh, dandy and beano properties you may have heard of anyone remember the bash street kids yeah the bash street kids is good actually oh wait yes yes i, I do recognize these, these characters I most of these. these ugly characters love the ugly characters the interesting thing about the bash street kids is every comic that dc thompson put out had a version of the bash street kids which was a group of children that got into mischief at the, their school you would have various archetypes in these characters so you'd have the ugly one, which in the Bash Street Kids was Plug. And then you have the other <laughs> ugly one. The dirty one, which is Smithy over on the left of this. You had the smart one, which is probably, I can't remember his name, but like he's it's like right down at the bottom. Yeah, it's the <laughs> one with glasses. And these were like the general archetypes. You had the one who was kind of like a bit of a chancer, like an artful dodger type, which is whoever the guy on the right is there. Um, and th basically, like that's who the Bash Street Kids are. Now, um, Bash Street Kids also each had a dog, uh, and those were the pup <laughs> parades star starring the Bash Street pups now they originate in the beano but oh no where are they going where are they going they ended up in hold on <laughs> let me trace this out they ended up in the topper which Why is what, to what brand owns topper? they moved on to the topper so um until the topper folded and was merged into beza and topper <laughs> And then eventually they worked their way back to the Beano because Beezer and Topper folded and got folded into the Dandy and the Beano at some point. Um, you know, the individual strips, although the comic no longer existed, did get rolled into their other places. Um, you've got Sparky over here. Sparky got rolled into the Topper. Buzz got rolled into the Topper. Hoot got rolled specifically into the Dandy. But the only thing that ever came out of that is Cuddles and Dimples. So Cuddles was a character from Hoot. Uh, oh, wait, no. Cuddles was a character from Nutty originally, who moved into Hoot when Nutty folded into the Dandy. Dimples was a character originally from the Dandy, but when Hoot got rolled into the Dandy, because the characters were so similar, they put them together in a series called Cuddles and Dimples. Cuddles used to have his own parents. They were removed from the comic after he moved into the Dandy and they're never mentioned again. <laughs> the, the thing you need to communicate here is that these comics were all owned by the same fucking company yes, and all the characters all basically look the same no these kind of hands. weird round-headed cab cauliflower-eared single-toothed shit-headed children <laughs> and there's no child in the entirety of britain who ever bought more than one of these things at a time the reason they all look the same is because they've all got the same artists and writers i want to draw your attention to banana man who was originally from nutty but then was a staple in the dandy and the beano um for some time we've got a character here from nutty the reason i've included this i've included just things with funny names really this is owen goal who was originally <laughs> called the cannonball kid owen goal is a lot funnier um i'm gonna come back to my my bid on the bash street kids now here's big fat flow by the way um she was in the buzz um so the buzz also had a series called skookum school skookum i don't know why it was called skookum i don't know why it was called skookum school skookum school was another like series about a load of kids at school they went to skookum school that's why it's called that it's it's that it's got no 
relation to the Bash Street Kids, um, but they essentially formed the same archetypes and they were just in another comic. They were in Buzz. So eventually Skookum School gets uh, gets into Cracker as you the headhunters of Skook- Skookum School <laughs> and then probably um, got rolled into the Beezer at some point. There was also in Cracker a series called Spookum School, which was about a bunch of kids who were ghosts. Spookum School has no relation to Skookum School. The kids in Spookum School are not the kids from Skookum School who have died. It has almost exactly the same name, was published in the same comics in the same time period over a year until Cracker folded into the Beezer, and it just it just makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm going to zoom in on some topper here so that you can see my favourite character from the topper. Looking forward to this. Uncle Dan the Medicine Man. <laughs> Big Uggy. <laughs> Big Uggy. It's Big Uggy. It's Big Uggy. Oh, there's Nancy. I remember Nancy. Nancy is actually an import from America, so yeah, that's I the same so. Nancy but as Nancy American is Nancy. There? Yeah, so they God also, as well as everything that is on my list here, they have a few licensed properties and they did reprint stuff from other places. So there's some Belgium comic reprints that they did. There's some American ones. Um, Big Uggy is pretty good. Wild Young Durky. we got Posty Knox, The Boston Boys. And of course... <laughs> Beryl, Beryl the Peril, not to be confused with Minnie the Minx, who was in the Beano. Beryl. Now, Beryl the Peril was absorbed into the Beano. No, she was in the Dandy. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, she may have eventually <laughs> become a, a Beano as well. She, they had Minnie the Minx. Minnie the Minx. Um, Minnie the, Minnie the, Minx. The, I think it was in the Dandy, there was a character called the Smasher who looks almost exactly like Dennis the Menace. He wears the same clothes, he has the same hair, his face is almost the same. His character archetype was that uh, he would actually accidentally break things and get get into trouble as opposed to Dennis the Menace who would break things on purpose and get into trouble it, we can't call them Dennis the Menace anymore because that's uh, property of uh, wh- whoever the fuck in America is. Now Dennis and Nasher is how you're supposed to call yeah. them. Dennis and Nasher, exactly. We'll come on to that. Um, I'm just going to go around some characters you may or may not have heard of. Uh, from the dandy, we've got Hungry, Hun- Horace. Hungry Horace, who just used to eat things. Hungry Horace! Um, Keyhole Kate was the face of the book for some time. She took over from Corky the Cat, who's over here. I'll zoom on in, in on him in a second because he looks absolutely disgusting. Um <laughs> Keyhole Kate uh, was a character who just liked to peep through people's keyholes and got up to a number of stories based on that. Um, I don't know why she was chosen to be the mascot for the dandy, but they... Uh... Progressive female lead in the in the comic. Do you have Ed First in here? Oh, no, there's so many comics. I haven't gone into specifics about a lot of them. Here is Corky the cat. <laughs> He'll be first or burst. <laughs> that's, oh, that's Corky. Why did they make that? And here's some close-ups of Desperate Dan eating a cow pie and shaving with a scythe. Love cow pie. Desperate Dan's whole thing was that he, he became eventually the face of the dandy. His whole thing was that he was the strongest man in the world. He slept on a pillow filled with gravel. He shaved with various implements, which often were referred to as blow torches. Um, and uh, he could lift a cow with one hand. Dude, look at that jawline. He eats cow pies. He's a cow Those boy. Those cow pies always looked uh, delicious. Do you know about how he stopped eating cow pies eventually? Do you know why? Is it mad cow disease? Is it mad cow disease? Mad cow disease. During the mad, uh... mad cow disease scare, he stopped <laughs> eating cow pie. Um, I'm going to take you back to the Bash Street Kids because I think this exemplifies everything. A lot of the Bash Street Kids is crossed over. So we have a line coming over here. So two two hard lines here <laughs> indicates that something is a connected series. There's Roger the Dodger. He was in the Beano occasionally, but uh, no, he was in the Beano mainly, but occasionally the Dandy. So for some reason, Plug got his own comic book, like not just like his own story. He got his own comic book called Plug. He got an entire comic book. <laughs> Yo, he made it big. <laughs> For Plug having his own comic, which lasted two years, that's longer than Cracker, he uh, he was given his own cast of orbiting characters. So as well as his dog from the the pups, um, the pup parade, which we've already talked about, he was also given a monkey. And Plug had a pet monkey, apparently, which was in Plug. So Plug eventually folds into the Beezer, um, which eventually merges to become Beezer and Topper. But this is how crazy this was. They were like, you know what people like? They like Plug. They 
They don't like the rest of the Bass, Bass Street Boys. They like Plug. Has given him his own comic for two years until he gets it's rolled like into Joey Beezer. And yes, it is like Joey and Friends. I've got a little line here from uh, Beezer and Topper because in Beezer and Topper, so this is Nasha and Dennis the Menace. We've not really talked about Dennis. He's arguably the most recognizable character from the Beano. Uh, his whole story, as with most of the boys in the Beano and the Dandy, is that he gets into mischief and gets told off by his parents. That's all they ever do. Good for him. Good for him. Nasha, his dog, um, has babies at one point in the the Beano. Um, and this is from a Beano comic strip originally, um, which is Dennis and Nasha. Uh, this is good Natasha um, or Natasha. So they all start with a GN. Good Natasha. Natasha got her own um, series oh, of stories. <laughs> and uh, ended up in not only i think the topper hold on right i can't imagine a beano reading kid wanting to know what happened to natasha and being told to read the fucking topper instead so as well as being in beezer and topper she also yep the line is there if we come all the way over here <laughs> wikipedia suggests that she, or perhaps all of um, Nash's puppies, other than Nipper, who was his main boy puppy, were also in Jackie. And this is a part of my spider diagram we've not seen yet. This is the girl's side of DC Thompson. The forbidden side. Nikkei, look! <laughs> no, that's Nikki, not Nikkei. Oh, oh. <laughs> As well as having... Diana? As well as having uh, Diana, yeah, probably named after the one herself, Princess. What did that get folded into when she died? Camilla. A, a car crash, I think. Diana got folded into Jackie. Um, interesting fact about Jackie. People say that Jackie is named after Jacqueline Wilson, who is an acclaimed children's author who worked at DC Thompson while Jackie was being published. It's not true, but it is true that she worked on the Jackie comic while it was being made. So um, it, it's not just a thing that happened with the boys' comics. The girls' comics also all got folded into each other. So Cherie got folded into Romeo, which got folded into Diana, which got folded into Jackie. Uh, Jackie uh, got some stuff from... L oh, no. It, Jackie put stuff in Lucky Charm because Lucky Charm was like Red uh, red Arrow. So it just reprinted stuff from all of the other girls' comics that were going on at the moment. Um, Jackie didn't eventually get folded into anything uh bunty was eventually the main um the main girls comic which ran from 1958 to 2001 uh, and it absorbed things such as spellbound which was a girls horror themed comic book uh, which got rolled into debbie which got rolled into mandy which got rolled into mandy and judy which came from judy which came from tracy and emma and mandy and judy got rolled into bunty which had also rolled in Susie, which also rolled in tv tops which was originally just called tops uh and uh, and Nikki as well. The only like thing I could find that was mentioned about stories that I could say were rolled in was there was one called The Comp in Nikki, which definitely made its way across to Bunty. You also had another set of girls' comics for younger girls. So Twinkle is what ended up there. Twinkle absorbed Pepper Street, which was a licensed property based on some cartoon, I think, and Little Star. There's a connection between Little Star and another comic all the way over the other side of the diagram over here because that was related to where is the magic beano book um which was mm. uh, a combination of the beano and the magic comic uh which was aimed at younger readers uh, and was eventually revived as the magic comic revival which i believe is what i've got connected over here somewhere to twinkle because it got rolled in uh, little star what's going on with little star Loving the face on Biffo, by the way. Oh, yeah, we'll Biffo talk about Biffo is horrible. in a second. It's a great, good face. It's a great face. Little Star also included stories about Baby Crockett, who was originally in the Beezer, but also appeared in the comic book Bimbo. <laughs> Bimbo. Every every combination of word <laughs> letters has been used up by this fucking comic company. It feels like I'm looking at a list of ZX Spectrum games. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to... Um, uh, the Magic comic also had Peter Piper who picked people out of pickles. Um, 
and uh, he eventually got rolled into the topper. I want to show you We Are United. So We Are United was a running strip about a team of footballers called United FC. Um, wasn't specified where they were in the country. So We Are United was a crossover um, series like The Avengers um, in, wow. uh, in US comics, but for various footballers who had appeared in other DC Thompson comics, such as Iron Bar, who was a goalkeeper from Spike. Did Owen Gold get in here? I don't think Owen Gold did. <laughs> Justice but for L- Owen Gold. <laughs> Limp Along Leslie did, and he's from The Wizard. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of what happened with football. And eventually We Are United started showing up in Football Picture Story Monthly, which was a monthly magazine about f- football, real-life football, but also had football-based comic stories such as We Are United. Um, looking at other things, uh, Cuddly and Dudley, the magic comic revival. So we can see here that this this came from the the second run of magic comic i'm just going to zoom in on it and see if you can recognize one of the characters in here <gasps> is that is biffo? that is that biffo is that biffo is that biffo there is that biffo the bear so biffo was the uncle of cuddly and dudley and as we all know <laughs> biffo oh was the God. original mascot for the beano so why is he there because they're all owned and written by the same people uh, I'm going to come over to Biffo. He wasn't actually the original mascot. I've Look told you a lie. Here, this is the this is the Wikipedia picture <laughs> of Biffo. This is where Biffo appears. Now, Biffo is in some way connected to something over here because he also appeared in Twinkle. Uh, shoutouts to Shout Magazine and High Exclamation Point, by the way. <laughs> Pinups, boys. The original mascot of the Beano. Was none other I than know this yeah. guy. Big Ego. Did you take <laughs> my eggs? This DC Thompson obsession started because of my <laughs> fascination with the fact that they would name a character Big Ego. I didn't quite realize how that that was only the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg to you. Yeah, so Big Ego was an ostrich. Um, for some reason, an ostrich was the mascot for the Beano. It was the, the first character that really took off. And the reason they made Biffo the bear is because they felt that uh, people, <laughs> people so could good. not, people could not relate to an avian character as well as <laughs> to a mammalian character. What's he looking at? What's he thinking about? Thinking about big ego. He's just real happy. He's thinking about the One Piece and how it's real. <laughs> um, this is Harry Dan, um, who <laughs> was originally from the Beano, but eventually became Harry Dan, the football fan, over <laughs> in. I believe Beezer and Topper. Oh no, just the Beezer. It's like they realised they had a character that didn't rhyme in the name of the comic and they corrected it. Okay, so I think one of the most important things I found while researching this oh my is this strip. I'm going to zoom in on it. <laughs> Addy and Hermie. Oh my god. Addy and Hermie, the Nasty Nazis, was uh, a comic strip that appeared in the dandy between 1939 and 1941. It was about Adolf Hitler and Hermann Goering uh, and how they were bumbling idiots who would break everything. Uh, It features the characters speaking in German based english so like how, what we do when we do like what German we do when, when we talk in german the hell the yowl the yowl the rafters have let us down my leader the help <laughs> <laughs> was this comic made during the Second World War? This was yeah. made right at the start of the Second World War, so it was 1939 to 1941, so this was a bit of propaganda. But uh, That goes back to the Big Five, which were all propaganda to get kids interested in joining the army for the next big war that we had. I'm going to show you a comic that we've not talked about yet. It's not connected to any of these other properties, but it uh, other the other than Bifo. the Beano, the other than the Beano, this is the only ongoing comic that they have that's not based on another property or like a lifestyle magazine. Commando has been running since 1961. Up until this day, it's still being published, and it's just stories about people who work in military backgrounds. 
it's just weird and i guess that comes from i don't think it rolled anything in from the rover or the wizard or anything like that which were also war focused but it comes from the idea that kids i guess really want to read about what's going on in wars well you know that was the thing at the time gi joe whatever you have your uh Kids, yeah, that, kids like to play war. No, I think Commando is the nucleus of not only like Call of Duty, but also of like Tom mm. Clancy novels and things like that. Oh yeah, it's got a lot of that. And I mean, there, there's always been that. We've got the Dixon Hawk Library here, which uh, pre precedes adventure, but eventually got rolled into adventure. I didn't really zoom in on Skipper, but um, the reason I put a picture of Skipper here is because this particular picture is of a monkey about to spank a man with a cane. <laughs> As you do. Yeah, fucking get him. Get him. Got him. Look, there's another one in the background. <laughs> Good old corporal punishment. When Spex was in the military, he served with a guy called Corporal Punishment. I did, yeah. Corporal <laughs> Punishment. Um, we've got here Jimmy Johnson's Grockle uh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> A grockle is, is kind of some sort of dragon crossed with a dog. Some cryptid or something. Mm. Yeah, it's some sort of cryptid that um, that uh, Jimmy owned. Uh, this is the Wolf of Kabul, which had a prequel series called Young Wolf that appeared in Warlord, but the Wolf of Kabul was originally from The Wizard. Um, the Wizard got a revival at one point, but as far as I can tell, there was nothing related um, in The Wizard relaunch to what happened in The Wizard originally. Uh, I'll come back to that in a bit, I'm sure. Um, looking at Jimmy, Jimmy and his grockle, um, so originally this was called jimmy johnson's grockle it was republished as jimmy and his grockle in the dandy but it was also called something else and reappeared in another comic so it was in sparky as my grockle and me <laughs> <laughs> he but for those not blessed with the video he was like scrolling around on his chart for like a full minute because there's <laughs> so many lines there are so many lines i want to tell you a little bit about the crunch um so the crunch uh, which included man tracker this is the man tracker and this is his next target um and starhawk uh this was um dc thompson's answer to 2000 ad comics uh which is judge dread and the surrounding comic scene around that so for people who have heard of judge dread but not 2000 ad judge dread was just one of the bigger stories from a series of comics um that were uh in 2000 AD, which told lots of different sci-fi and dystopian style stories. So um, they came up with Starhawk. Starhawk appeared in Star Blazer comic as well. Um, that didn't really get rolled into anything. The Crunch eventually got rolled into the Hotspur. Uh, Starhawk also appeared in Spike. Um, I can't remember what Spike was about, but at least some of it was football. Spike also contained Crazy Cops, which was a humorous strip. Um, Crazy Cops uh, was a relaunch of L Cars. Um, it's a it's a comedy about policemen, um, and that was originally from Sparky, for instance. Uh, over here, we've got some other orbiting things that I just knew were in the Sunday Post, so I included them. So Nosy Parker was in The Beezer. It was also in the Sunday Post, which is uh, as just a general comic strip. Um, um, and originally it was in the rover uh, i think as part of the rover's midget comic um you got nero and zero the rollicking romans who also showed up in the sunday post for a while uh other things that we haven't talked about yet i like that there's the all these children's cartoons and it's just that some of them appeared in the actual newspaper the sunday post yeah um other things uh the beano also had an offshoot called epic magazine um which is one of those magazines you can still get now that's like got a little toy on the front and it's all like plastic covers and stuff it talks about video gaming as well i think um epic magazine was originally called dennis the menace and nash's epic magazine uh before that it was called 100 percent official dennis the menace and nasher magazine and before that <laughs> it was called beano max beano when you when the beano on its own isn't enough you have to start beano max Sing. Beano Max. <laughs> they they had a Beano Max. They had a Dandy Max. Uh, I think there might have been a Beza and Topper Max at some point I as like well. That someone at DC Thompson was like, "We don't have enough comics. Let's make a, a, a different version of the Beano and call it the Beano Max." So were these were these comics popular in like different regions? No, they weren't even popular in our country. <laughs> National? Were they in certain regions or? Because I, I I can. 
imagine there being like school kids who go, oh, the Beano, that's for fucking whatever. Like, I only read this because this is the thing that's popular here. Wars, You've got to go like three yeah. miles down the road for the Beano <laughs> to be popular. Like, I can I can imagine them being popular in different of regions of the UK and kids having just no idea that they're all the same thing. I asked a couple of people about this and um, they would say things like, oh, I like the Beano more than the Dandy and thought that they were published by different people. Um, and they're not. They're written by the same people. Uh, they have the same artists. It's the same writing room for a lot of it. Uh, they they are just segregated by these characters live in the in the dandy universe and these characters live in the Beano universe. Except they don't because they constantly get folded into one another and then DC Thompson makes a new publication. Yeah, I, I mean, I can understand having a magazine for girls and maybe you've got a magazine for girls that's more like comics focused and maybe you've got a magazine for girls that's more talk focused so i could understand you having jackie and having bunty but i can't understand you having mandy and judy at the same time that did basically the same thing and that's why they eventually became mandy Mandy and judy Judy at the same time i I don't get it Um, i don't get it the reason I brought us over to this corner is because this is where the more adult comics live. So I say adult, they're not sexy, but they are romantic. So we have Star Love Stories, which ran from 1965 to 1990. Star Love Stories absorbed four different love stories um, comic magazines. And these weren't like picture stories. These were written stories as well. But why did you have Love and Life Library, Golden Heart Love Stories, Silver Moon Romances, and Blue rosette romances all running at the same time like starting within two years of each other and then eventually roll them into star love stories because they were just fighting each other it made no sense you could have just had one romance book i really don't understand this is what baffles me i don't understand anything about why there were so many things doing the same thing i'm gonna go out on a limb and think it's regional focused because like even as much as like in the 70s and like the maybe the 80s as well you didn't really have I think national industry is probably the wrong way of putting it because you did have that but you didn't have like national focused media in the same way like you had a lot of very regional focused stuff back then like and despite despite the fact that britain is a very small kind of like region of the world like it does have very it's se- it's segmented very regional focused places yeah it's very very segmented by like exactly where you are and it can be like a matter of miles as to whether like individual like single figure miles as to whether something is targeted at you as an individual or not based on where you are um genuinely bizarre but i could i could believe that that's it that reminds me of the, I don't know if any of you have seen that video. I think Tom Scott did it of like the um the 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 children's song and how it's it, it's altered based on where in the UK you you live. Which song? Oh, it's um the Jingle Bells, Batman Smells. Jingle Bells, Batman Smells. Yeah, yeah, that one. Oh yeah, I bet you could tell like regional lines. It did like that. a map of like of of it. It's very fascinating. I'll link it. But it's like yeah, in the pre. In the pre-globalization era, like somebody from Reading probably wouldn't be un- able to understand the accent of somebody from yeah. Yorkshire. <laughs> He's speaking different languages. The microculture would have been very, very different as to like a what they were interested in and b like how it was marketed to them. I'm betting that DC Thompson was just a fucking stupid company, though. It could just be that. I mean, there was a lot of that going on in like the the 60s to the 80s as well. Like it reminds me on a on a microcosm. Which, sorry, this is the microcosm of the DC thing, which is Microcosm. Oh, I can't even remember their names now. The Super Marionation people and all the attempts that they oh, made yes. to make a super popular like TV show with marionette puppets. Like eventually, they settled on a couple of things that got really popular but like they they had so many runs at it over like 20 years or so and they all seem just very bizarre they just tried them out in the hopes that one of them would stick yeah pretty much and they wanted to get syndication in the u.s and it never really stuck like they had one go at it and it wasn't the one which they thought was the most popular so they they stopped it like it got very very bizarre it's worth looking at that as a 
as a side thing at a later point but this is this this seems to me very similar i'm gonna point out a couple more things so the big palooka i put in there just because i thought that was funny um it's good it got a sequel series called the son of the big palooka it was originally in the wizard and then the son of the big palooka was in the hotspur i'm gonna scroll us out so you can see this this web that i've made put ominous mu- music over it when you do the scroll out <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's fucking massive. There's so many of them. So although not everything is connected, I think a lot of the information here has been lost to history. So there was, in this guy's blog I was reading that helped with a lot of the research, um, he said one of his friends could have sworn that um, the skipper got rolled into the victor or something like that, but he couldn't (laughs) find any evidence for it. Um... Or it might have been adventure was was rolled into something, but it, it was like okay, so he couldn't find any evidence of it from like a comic book that said adventure now part of you know whatever it might have been. But um, so there's probably been things like I can't imagine Jackie just kind of stopped. So there's probably a lot of information um, about individual strips that were in Jackie that got moved into Bunty when Jackie stopped existing. Similarly, like there's so many things like the Beezer and the Topper just stopped, but I know a lot of their characters moved on to be in the Dandy and in the Beano, for instance. So what's also not caught here in my diagram is i've put on all of the comics that they they ever owned other than like the licensed stuff or the the less interesting stuff that was like you know gardeners weekly or whatever um but uh i've not put on even like one percent of the comics that were in each of these things each of the like the beezer if you look at the list of comic strips that ran in the beezer for its however many years like 20 year run um there there are hundreds of individually named characters and comic strips and they all have stupid names like wondrous wellies (laughs) and like (laughs) jimmy the the thinny mamini or something I, they've all got <laughs> such stupid names what i'm imagining is a is a writer's room with like 30 people in it and each and each of them is being told to come up with like a new comic for the bindo every single <laughs> week and they're just like uh, F- F- freddy the ape and his magic grape and then that yes <laughs> that, yeah. it's jimble and his thimble and then that comic runs for 20 years, moves through eight different comics. The person writing it writes like seven issues every day. Like, it's... It... <laughs> There's stuff like, so the Beano originally, it had a character called Lord Snooty, and he was just on his own for a while. Um, Lord Snooty is still a character in the Beano, but now it's Lord Snooty and his chums. And his chums are various other failed Beano characters that have been rolled into Lord Snooty and his chums. So <laughs> they have like a place a to live. The ground for abandoned yeah. Beano characters. <laughs> they ran a segment in the Beano once where they went to the Beano retirement home and, like, Big Ego and Biffo were like getting their meals from there. Yeah, what's not captured on here is although I've chosen specific comics because I think they're either relevant, like Cuddles and Dimples, which I thought was an interesting bit of story, or because they cross over in interesting places, there's probably hundreds of connections between various comics that I have no idea about because researching this is trawling through the Albion Comics Database Wiki, <laughs> the UK <laughs> Comics Wiki, old forum posts from like DC Thompson Forum Appreciation appreciation societies um this one guy's blog that was really helpful not for specific like comics that were were not specific strips that were in these comics but for finding out just when the comics ran from and to and what they got absorbed into and wikipedia is not bad like wikipedia has some uh, if we if someone could like pull up the list of names of Beza comic strips that'd be really good and we can just run through the stupidest ones because they're like wikipedia has a comprehensive list of those but 
it doesn't necessarily tell you if they appeared in any other DC Thompson properties or anything, and I'm sure they did. I'm sure once the dandy folded, you started seeing like Desperate Dan show up more in the Beano. If you play Beano Town Racing uh, on the PC, for instance, you, you can play as characters from the dandy in that. Corky the Cat is in that. Desperate Dan is in that. Banana Man's in that. Uh, although originally he's from Nutty, of course. Of course, um, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I, I just want to. I just want to say there are so many in the middle here, right in the middle. Bucko's flying bedstead. Did we mention Tricky Dicky? I certainly think so. Here's General Jumbo. I remember General Jumbo. Um, yeah, General, General Jumbo, Jumbo. control little army men. He stand is bad company. He stand is bad company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dreamy Dick, Uncle Dan the Medicine Man, Tommy's TikTok twin, <laughs> Willy Wink the Missing Link. <laughs> Dicky Bird. Young Sid the Copper's Kid. <laughs> Mr. Licko and his lollipops. <laughs> Attila the Hen. The Wallies of Winkle Street. Twit Hall. <laughs> the Munchers. Can I tell you my favourite bit of Beano trivia? Go on. It, a couple of years ago, the Beano um, sent a cease and desist to uh, the MP Jacob Rees Mogg. Because uh, the, they said he looked too much like the fictional character Walter the Softy. Walter the Softy, lovely. <laughs> he does. You're right. That's funny. Uh, also, there is a uh, there's actually a statue of Desperate Dan in Dundee marking his birthplace, uh, but it's kind of a disturbing looker, if you ask me. <laughs> there's there's also a Minnie the Mink statue in Dundee. Yeah, it's in, oh, it's in we the same fucking place. Do a meet up in Dundee. <laughs> no, Dundee has nothing <laughs> except these statue. two statues. And that's enough. <laughs> I like Count Spatula. Count Spatula. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Beefy Dan, the fast food man. Willie fix it. I'm looking through the, my my copy again now. The Wizards of Oz. Oh, sorry, it's Willy Walker and the Wonderful Wizards of Oz. Oh, wait, on Oz. A lot of the amusement of these comics for me comes from the fact that characters seem to talk in just, like, incomprehensible, like, cartoon thought bubble words. Yahoo! You know, they don't just say yaf Yahoo, they have, like, their own lexicon of these words. Yeep. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find it. It must be, like, the regional thing, maybe. Maybe this is a regional thing. Maybe he's right. It, it is curious that it lasted until the Thatcher years, which is when, like, we became a monoculture because globalization really started to kick in. Desert Island Dick. There's a lot of dicks. The ugliest pig in the world. Our <laughs> teachers are walrus! Exclamation point. <laughs> Ali's Baba, the babe with the invisible bodyguard. Uh, he wasn't always called that. Hold on, he's on my he's on my chart. <laughs> This panel has a character saying Gabal Blurp Noshti. Noshti. <laughs> Nosh is a good word. That's a that's word, a real that's, word that is almost solely now used in these Nosh. comics. Nosh. Okay, so as far as I'm aware, Ali and his barber, also known as Ali's barber, also known as Jimmy's Green Genie, uh, <laughs> originates in Sparky. Which then went to the top. Was absorbed which into the top. Which then went into the Beezer and Topper, the which was and then absorbed Beezer into the topper. Beano. So apparently, Alan Grant worked for DC Thompson for a while. Alan Grant was the writer for Judge Dredd at 2000 AD. So that is that is it's all very fucking close knit, isn't it? All of this community. Yeah, um, so you've also got the amazing Mr. X in The Dandy, who was um, the first British superhero, published in 1944. So this was wow. around the time that like the Human Torch and um, Captain America would have been published in the US, like the original run of them. Five Spunky Duncans. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All of these comics are created in a meeting that lasted for 30 minutes. Yeah. 